Hi, I'm Ilkir, one of the co-founders of Ponce. In the next couple of minutes, I will be explaining how we're democratizing early disease detection through the deployment of AI-empowered ultrasound outside the hospital settings with a specific focus on aging population. One of the main reasons we started our company is because our father passed away at the age of 65. This was a tragic accident that could have been avoided if he was monitored more frequently because he was in the high risk group of heart disease due to family history. This is just one example out of many, as statistics show that by 2030, one in six people in the world will be aged 60 years or older, and more than 85% of this aging population will have minimum one chronic condition. Some of the challenges in healthcare for aging populations include in rural areas, access to imaging is limited and expensive, and there is lack of healthcare professionals that can provide high quality care. 77% of adults over the age of 50 prefer to age in place, which means they require healthcare solutions to come to their homes. And most importantly, frequent monitoring of high risk individuals outside the hospitals is not available. These are the exact challenges we're trying to address as pawns by converting any mobile ultrasound with AI into a powerful, high quality data source. We're deploying our imaging solutions uh, and making it available as part of hospital home services and mobile healthcare teams, as well as uh, deploying our imaging pod solutions, which can be seen on the right hand side inside pharmacies and retail centers and walk-in clinics. Our, our strength lies in our software solutions, which are device agnostics. Our AI-driven navigation technology, which is the first GPS technology for ultrasound, allows untrained healthcare professionals, such as nurses, pharmacists, or caregivers, to collect clinically acceptable ultrasound data outside the hospital settings. Our patented image enhancement technology makes invisible early stage disease tissue changes visible and provides 10 times more improved resolution and 10 times more images from a single image. Our AI-driven tissue characterization solutions provide for the first time how early stage diseases look and advance. Our initial focus area is on breast cancer, and we're further diversifying and increasing the data set size that we're collecting through our generative AI solutions. However, our other potential application areas with respect to the aging populations include heart disease, stroke, and musculoskeletal diseases such as osteoarthritis. We are addressing a significant gap, presenting a substantial opportunity. Current technologies cannot capture high quality image data outside the hospitals, limiting us to 100 million scans. By bridging this gap, we aim to gather 500 million ultrasound scans, establishing the first disease progression database and a substantial imaging resource that is generating a tremendous opportunity. Our business model consists of partnering with major research hospitals and offering our solutions for patient triaging, reducing over admissions and providing high quality data on early stage disease, which they can use for improved care. We will penetrate into the mass market by partnering with retail care centers to reach a wider and diverse population and access people living in rural areas. Our second revenue model consists of monetizing the large scale and diverse data generated through our platform to our tier two customers. We are aiming to provide substantial cost savings to our tier one customers by avoiding unnecessary admissions to the hospitals and improving the patient care they are providing through their hospital at home services. Our tier two customers will have substantial cost savings by improving their clinical trial recruitment and retention efforts, and as well as improving their R&D development efforts. By, in, by using the information that we are providing them on early stage disease, specifically with our imaging based tissue biomarkers. And most importantly, by saving patients time to scheduling and getting the advanced imaging solutions, our platform offers substantial savings to the patients. Currently, we have an ongoing pilot study with Roche Pharma, where we are collecting breast uh, ultrasound scans and liver ultrasound scans from women who are in the high risk group outside the hospital settings. And due to our very successful preliminary results, we're happy to announce that we'll be starting several other pilot studies with major stakeholders in the healthcare industry. industry. 
This is the team that makes this possible. Combined, we have more than 30 years of experience in business and medical device development. We have a strong advisory board and partners who support us throughout our journey. I would like to mention one last thing before I conclude my presentation. If Pond's technology was available 17 years ago, we would have celebrated this Father's Day with our father. Let's help people and please support us. Thank you again. Great presentation. Well done, Ilker. And uh, we've got uh, one more round of questions for our judges. Start off with Tiffany. Tiffany, go ahead. Hey, thank you so much. Um, just a quick question on maybe the, the go to market. So right now, are you um, screening for patients who would be able to get reimbursement for the ultrasound? Or is this truly more preventative? So you are screening for um, for more patients than who might get reimbursed? Yeah, right now we are basically the pilot study we're performing is part of uh, basically a research hospital setting, which patients are part of hospital at home services. So they are doing <laughs> monitored more frequently, and we're showing that this data can be collected outside the hospital settings, and everything is sent back to the hospital. So the data that we are collecting becomes part of the patient's electronic health records. So th this is the route we chose, and then, but we, our ultimate goal is to reduce the price of medical imaging to fifteen twenty five dollars, so that anyone can afford it without medical coverage. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, fantastic. And it looks like we have uh, Yasmin ready to go next. Yasmin? Hi. So I actually work for Act for Healthcare, uh, but selling ultrasounds and all of that at one point in my career. I'm wondering why your go-to-market strategy does not include working with device manufacturers that actually do ultrasounds. So that's one question. And the second question is, you, you had um, in your go-to-market strategy uh, something like CVS. Do they, I'm, I'm not familiar with how many CVSs actually have ultrasounds. Mm -hmm. So that's my second question. And, and the third question is, as, uh, um, you know, as we look at the future of radiology with AI, um, a lot of those images um, might be read by AI, and they're a lot more accurately read by AI. So enhancing those images, does that, uh, are you focused on the radiologist market, or are you trying to have AI just give the result? I'm, I'm not sure I understand your actual steps. Uh, so if you can walk us through the use case, that would be helpful. Perfect. So first question is like we're in discussions with Siemens, for example. So as our solutions are device agnostic, they can be integrated to any kind of platform. So we're discussing with Siemens right now, and they're very interested in using by de basically deploying our software solutions into their point of care ultrasound device uh, offerings. So yes, we will. We are open to work with any manufacturing. Basically, we can work with GE, we can work with Butterfly, Clarius, whoever wants to basically deploy our technology. So we have that advantage, we are device agnostic. The other thing regarding CVS, the CVS is basically providing uh, basically uh, telehealth solutions to their, uh, to their uh, customers. They're also turning some of their locations to clinical trial centers such as Walgreens. But our significant advantage is like there's no technology that exists right now who can provide medical ultrasound imaging in their locations. So we are in very close discussions with CVS right now. They're very open to have this kind of solutions available because one of the major challenges was like, okay, ultrasound requires a lot of expertise to collect data. So that's, they don't want to train their personnel already who is overloaded with other things. So our AI solution, the navigation that I mentioned, can any kind of person, like a healthcare, like a pharmacist or a caregiver or a nurse who's basically deployed in these locations can collect data without any training. So that's our significant advantage. And when we're discussing that with CVS, or Walgreens, they're very open to solutions that can provide this technology, such as the ones that we have mentioned. And regarding ultrasound, so what we're doing is like ultrasound is a very great imaging modality, cost real-time imaging, non-invasive, but one of the significant disadvantages of ultrasound is like imaging early stage disease is very problematic. And because of that reasons, all of the competitions that I showed in our slide, they know they don't really enter the early stage imaging field. They usually try to segment anatomy from ultrasound scans, which is a much, much easier problem, and then try to do measurements and then provide information back to the clinicians or radiologists. What we're trying is basically for the first time, our pathogen enhancement improves the visibility of early stage disease, and our AI solutions can provide additional information. But what we're doing is we are not doing diagnostics. We're collecting the data, 
providing the information, enhanced results, sending everything back to the doctors. The radiologists can look at the collected data, they can look at the enhanced images, they can look at the AI disease likelihood index score, and then basically decide what they do. If something that was not on the scan, let's say three months ago, at that stage, they can say, look, this tissue was not there or tumor or nodule, come back to the hospital, we can diagnose you. And our platform also allows patient triaging, which there are, all the research hospitals are very, very interested in that. They don't want basically, they are mentioning that not everybody has to be at the hospital. We want to basically only provide, we want to provide care outside the hospital settings. And if you can provide us patient triaging solutions, we would love to have that available to us. And that triaging can be used also for radiologists when they go back to their offices next day, only the high risk patients will be shown to them through our, through our platform. So if, if I go to CVS after your agreement is done, somebody there can do the ultrasound. Yes. Do I get to see the results on some app or no. does it go directly just to my provider? It directly goes to your provider, but it becomes part of your electronic health records. And then you get contacted to the provider if they see, see something that wasn't there visible. Okay, thank you. Ease of access to medical imaging. It's like we've spoken with many, many, especially on the breast cancer imaging side, like it's very challenging to leave your daily life, family life, to go to the hospital, come back. Like pharmacies access everywhere. And especially, and the other thing is in the rural areas, you can basically, we can access more underrepresented communities and then minority groups as well. Fantastic. Great questions. All right, uh, Glennis. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, Really, really intriguing. And, um, potentially impactful. Um, so several questions. So in terms of liability, with any diagnostic tool, um, usually a major economic consideration is the liability and that's by for the device manufacturer, for the technician executing, the physician actually making the diagnosis. So um, have you considered, have you done any studies to look at your false positive, false negative rate? Um, I'm assuming with greater resolution and amplification by your AI platform, there'll be more things seen, but would physicians know how to interpret those? Yeah, that's a fantastic question as well. So our, our GPS technology has more than 90% accuracy. And then again, we're not doing it in diagnostics. All the data is sent back to the hospitals, the clinic EA. Basically during data collection, the AI identifies, or oh, this is the clinic EA correct location. I'm collecting, hold still. Once the data collection is finished, everything is sent back to the hospital, the radiologist can log on to the system, they look at the data, and then they look at the image enhancement results, they look at the disease likelihood index. So we have done several studies using our basically platform, we're achieving more than 90% accuracy in, in disease identification, we have done qualitative results, we have shown original ultrasound data to the radiologists and oncologists, our enhancement results, and then basically we want them to rate it, right, like rate it from 1 to 10, is the quality better or worse? We have again achieving more than ninety percent improve six more than sixty percent in in image quality improvement. They're very interested in that because, as I mentioned, one of the main challenges in ultrasound early stage disease identification is very very challenging. We are the only part technology that is providing them. And uh, again, in terms of liability questions, we don't do any diagnostics. Everything is the diagnostics will always be done at the hospitals. We are monitoring. We're providing them a platform that can monitor high risk groups more frequently get the data, and if they see something that wasn't there three months ago, at that point, they can call, intervene, and then call the patient back to the hospital, get a mammography scan, MRI scan, CT scan, and or a biopsy, where they will definitely do diagnostics inside the hospital settings. Okay, got you. Um, now, for the, for the other um, component of the patient experience, um, you know, often patients are sitting there having a scan, they have to wait for a physician or a technician to look and see if the images are okay. And then they come back sometimes and request additional images. So how are you fitting into that type of workflow if most of the actual execution of the scans are taking place remotely? Would there be a suite of people in the background? And also, are you collecting, sorry, um, just want to be mindful of time. Are you collecting information um, about the ultimate diagnosis. So are you com requiring that from your clients to get the pathology reports and add that to make your system more robust? Yes, that will be a basically additional loop that will come back from the hospital, 
right? Because that will be done at the hospital level. So we are hoping that by combining our imaging solutions or imaging data that we're providing and tissue biomarkers with their biopsy results or additional tests they do, we can further improve the AI, but that will be implemented inside the hospital settings. We won't have access to that, but or we will have access, but then the software solutions will be implemented at the hospital. And then for in terms of patient experience, as I shown the imaging parts, like it will be a totally enclosed environment. You will go, the pharmacist or caregiver will scan you, or you can be scanned at home if you prefer that. If you're part of a hospital at home services uh, providing center, then you can be scanned at home. So it's then, we talk, we've spoken with like hundreds of patients, especially in women with breast cancer. They want basically, if they can be scanned at home, they prefer that they can pay basically from out of pockets just to avoid going back and forth. This is, I heard from a very senior level VP, scheduling an appointment was easy, but she had to wait three months to get a scan. So we, 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 in our platform, you don't need that. And especially the other thing right. I mentioned in rural areas, these areas are becoming uh, medical health deserts. We really need technologies like that so that we can provide high quality imaging to those who, who are in need. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you.